Pyotr Alexeyevich Kropotkin, Russian, Petr Alexeyevich Kropotkin December 9, 1842 – February 8, 1921 was a Russian activist, revolutionary, scientist, geographer and philosopher who advocated anarcho-communism. Born into an aristocratic land-owning family, he attended a military school and later served as an officer in Siberia, where he participated in several geological expeditions. He was imprisoned for his activism in 1874 and managed to escape two years later. He spent the next 41 years in exile in Switzerland, France where he was imprisoned for almost four years and in England. He returned to Russia after the Russian Revolution in 1917, but was disappointed by the Bolshevik form of state socialism. Kropotkin was a proponent of a decentralized communist society free from central government and based on voluntary associations of self-governing communities and worker-run enterprises. He wrote many books, pamphlets and articles, the most prominent being The Conquest of Bread and Fields, Factories and Workshops, and his principal scientific offering, Mutual Aid, a Factor of Evolution. He also contributed the article on anarchism to the Encyclopædia Britannica 11th edition and left unfinished a work on anarchist ethical philosophy. Biography Early life Kropotkin was born in Moscow, into the second highest level of the Russian aristocracy. His mother was the daughter of a Cossack general. His father, Alexei Petrovich Kropotkin, was a prince in Smolensk, of the Rurik dynasty which had ruled Russia before the rise of the Romanovs. Kropotkin's father owned large tracts of land and nearly 1,200 male serfs in three provinces. U N D E R the influence of republican teachings. Kropotkin dropped his princely title at age 12, and even rebuked his friends, when they so referred to him. In 1857, at age 14, Kropotkin enrolled in the Corps of Pages at St. Petersburg. Only 150 boys, mostly children of nobility belonging to the court, were educated in this privileged corps, which combined the character of a military school endowed with special rights and of a court institution attached to the imperial household. Kropotkin's memoirs detail the hazing and other abuse of pages for which the Corps had become notorious. In Moscow, Kropotkin developed what would become a lifelong interest in the condition of the peasantry. Although his work as a page for Tsar Alexander II made Kropotkin skeptical about the Tsar's liberal reputation, Kropotkin was greatly pleased by the Tsar's decision to emancipate the serfs in 1861. In St. Petersburg, he read widely on his own account, and gave special attention to the works of the French encyclopedists and to French history. The years 1857-1861 witnessed a growth in the intellectual forces of Russia, and Kropotkin came under the influence of the new liberal revolutionary literature, which largely expressed his own aspirations. In 1862, Kropotkin graduated first in his class from the Corps of Pages, and entered the Tsarist army. The members of the corps had the prescriptive right to choose the regiment to which they would be attached. Following a desire to be someone useful, Kropotkin chose the difficult route of serving in a Cossack regiment in eastern Siberia. For some time, he was aide-de-camp to the governor of Transbaikalia at Chita, later he was appointed attaché for Cossack affairs to the governor-general of East Siberia at Irkutsk. Geographical expeditions in Siberia The administrator under whom Kropotkin served, General Bolesler Kazimirovich Kukul was a liberal and a democrat who maintained personal connections to various Russian radical political figures exiled to Siberia. These included the writer M. I. Mikhailov (1826–1865), to whom Kukul sent Kropotkin to warn the exiled intellectual that Moscow police agents were on the scene to examine his ongoing political activities in confinement. As a result of this assignment, Kropotkin made the acquaintance of Mikhailov, who provided the young Tsarist functionary with a copy of a book by the French anarchist Pierre Joseph Proudhon, Kropotkin's first introduction to anarchist ideas. Kukul was subsequently dismissed from his administrative position and Kropotkin moved from administration to state sponsored scientific endeavors. In 1864, Kropotkin accepted a position in a geographical survey expedition, crossing North Manchuria from Transbaikalia to the Amur, and soon was attached to another expedition up the Singari River into the heart of Manchuria. 
The expeditions yielded valuable geographical results. The impossibility of obtaining any real administrative reforms in Siberia now induced Kropotkin to devote himself almost entirely to scientific exploration, in which he continued to be highly successful. Kropotkin continued his political reading, including works by such prominent liberal thinkers as John Stuart Mill and Alexander Herzen. These readings, along with his experiences among peasants in Siberia, led him to declare himself an anarchist by 1872. In 1867, Kropotkin resigned his commission in the army and returned to St. Petersburg, where he entered the St. Petersburg Imperial University to study mathematics, becoming at the same time secretary to the geography section of the Russian Geographical Society. His departure from a family tradition of military service prompted his father to disinherit him leaving him a prince with no visible means of support." In 1871, Kropotkin explored the glacial deposits of Finland and Sweden for the society. In 1873, he published an important contribution to science, a map and paper in which he showed that the existing maps entirely misrepresented the physical features of Asia. The main structural lines were in fact from southwest to northeast, not from north to south or from east to west as had been previously supposed. During this work, he was offered the secretaryship of the society, but he had decided that it was his duty not to work at fresh discoveries but to aid in diffusing existing knowledge among the people at large. Accordingly, he refused the offer and returned to St. Petersburg, where he joined the Revolutionary Party. Topic. Activism in Switzerland and France Kropotkin visited Switzerland in 1872 and became a member of the International Workingmen's Association at Geneva. However, he found that he did not like IWA's style of socialism. Instead, he studied the program of the more radical Jura Federation at Nucatel and spent time in the company of the leading members, and adopted the creed of anarchism. Topic. Activism in Russia and arrest On returning to Russia, Kropotkin's friend Dmitry Clements introduced him to the Circle of Tchaikovsky, a socialist, populist group created in 1872. Kropotkin worked to spread revolutionary propaganda among peasants and workers, and acted as a bridge between the circle and the aristocracy. Throughout this period, Kropotkin maintained his position within the Geographical Society in order to provide cover for his activities. In 1872, Kropotkin was arrested and imprisoned in the Peter and Paul Fortress for subversive political activity, as a result of his work with the Circle of Tchaikovsky. Because of his aristocratic background, he received special privileges in prison, such as permission to continue his geographical work in his cell. He delivered his report on the subject of the Ice Age in 1876, where he argued that it had taken place in not as distant a past as originally thought. Topic. Escape and exile In 1876, just before his trial, Kropotkin was moved to a low-security prison in St. Petersburg, from which he escaped with the help of his friends. On the night of the escape, Kropotkin and his friends celebrated by dining in one of the finest restaurants in St. Petersburg, assuming correctly that the police would not think to look for them there. After this, he boarded a boat, and headed to England. After a short stay there, he moved to Switzerland where he joined the Jura Federation. In 1877, he moved to Paris, where he helped start the socialist movement. In 1878, he returned to Switzerland where he edited the Jura Federation's revolutionary newspaper La Revolte, and published various revolutionary pamphlets. In 1881, shortly after the assassination of Tsar Alexander II, he was expelled from Switzerland. After a short stay at Thonin, Savoy, he stayed in London for nearly a year. He attended the Anarchist Congress in London from July 14, 1881. Other delegates included Marie Le Comte, Errico Malatesta, Severio Merlino, Louise Michel, Nicolas Tchaikovsky and Émile Gautier. While respecting complete autonomy of local groups, the Congress defined propaganda actions that all could follow and agreed that propaganda by the deed was the path to social revolution. The Radical of July 23, 1881 reported that the Congress met on July 18 at the Cleveland Hall, Fitzroy Square, with speeches by Marie Le Comte, the transatlantic agitator, Louise Michel, and Kropotkin. 
Later Le Compte and Kropotkin gave talks to the Homerton Social Democratic Club and to the Stratford Radical and Dialectical Club. Kropotkin returned to Thonon in late 1882. Soon he was arrested by the French government, tried at Lyon, and sentenced by a police court magistrate under a special law passed on the fall of the Paris Commune to five years imprisonment, on the ground that he had belonged to the IWA 1883. The French chamber repeatedly agitated on his behalf, and he was released in 1886. He was invited to Britain by Henry Seymour and Charlotte Wilson and all three worked on Seymour's The Anarchist. Soon after Wilson and Kropotkin would split from the individualist anarchist Seymour and found the Freedom Press, an anarchist newspaper which continues to this day. Kropotkin was a regular contributor while Wilson was integral to the administrative and financial running of the paper until she resigned its editorship in 1895. He settled near London, living at various times in Harrow, then Bromley, where his daughter and only child, Alexandra, was born on April 15, 1887. He also lived for a number of years in Brighton. While living in London, Kropotkin became friends with a number of prominent English-speaking socialists, including William Morris and George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Return to Russia In 1917, after the February Revolution, Kropotkin returned to Russia after 40 years of exile. His arrival was greeted by cheering crowds of tens of thousands of people. He was offered the Ministry of Education in the Provisional Government, which he promptly refused, feeling that working with them would be a violation of his anarchist principles. His enthusiasm for the changes occurring in the Russian Empire expanded when Bolsheviks seized power in the October Revolution. He had this to say about the October Revolution. During all the activities of the present revolutionary political parties we must never forget that the October movement of the proletariat, which ended in a revolution, has proved to everybody that a social revolution is within the bounds of possibility. And this struggle, which takes place worldwide, has to be supported by all means, all the rest is secondary. The party of the Bolsheviks was right to adopt the old, purely proletarian name of Communist Party. Quote dot. Even if it does not achieve everything that it would like to, it will nevertheless enlighten the path of the civilized countries for at least a century. Its ideas will slowly be adopted by the peoples in the same way as in the 19th century the world adopted the ideas of the Great French Revolution. That is the colossal achievement of the October Revolution. I see the October Revolution as an attempt to bring the preceding February Revolution to its logical conclusion with a transition to communism and federalism." Even though he led a life on the margins of the revolutionary upheaval, Kropotkin became increasingly critical of the methods of the Bolshevik dictatorship, and went on to express these feelings in writing. Unhappily, this effort has been made in Russia under a strongly centralized party dictatorship. This effort was made in the same way as the extremely centralized and Jacobin endeavor of Babeuf. I owe it to you to say frankly that, according to my view, this effort to build a communist republic on the basis of a strongly centralized state communism under the iron law of party dictatorship is bound to end in failure. We are learning to know in Russia how not to introduce communism, even with a people tired of the old regime and opposing no active resistance to the experiments of the new rulers. Topic. Death Kropotkin died of pneumonia on February 8, 1921, in the city of Dmitrov, and was buried at the Novodevichy Cemetery in Moscow. Thousands of people marched in his funeral procession, including, with Vladimir Lenin's approval, anarchists carrying banners with anti-Bolshevik slogans. The occasion, the last public demonstration of anarchists in Soviet Russia, saw engaged speeches by Emma Goldman and Aaron Barron. In some versions of Peter Kropotkin's Conquest of Bread, the mini-biography states that this would be the last time that Kropotkin's supporters would be allowed to freely rally in public. In 1957 the Dvoritz Sovetov station of the Moscow Metro was renamed Kropotkinskaya in his honor. Philosophy Critique of capitalism Kropotkin pointed out what he considered to be the fallacies of the economic systems of feudalism and capitalism. He believed they create poverty and artificial scarcity while promoting privilege. 
Instead, he proposed a more decentralized economic system based on mutual aid, mutual support, and voluntary cooperation, asserting that the tendencies for this kind of organization already exist, both in evolution and in human society. He disagreed with the Marxian critique of capitalism, including the labor theory of value, believing there was no necessary link between work performed and the prices of commodities. His attacks on the institution of wage labor were based more on the power employers exerted over employees, which he claimed was made possible by the state protecting private ownership of productive resources, than the extraction of surplus value from their labor. Topic. Cooperation and competition In 1902, Kropotkin published his book Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution, which provided an alternative view of animal and human survival, beyond the claims of interpersonal competition and natural hierarchy proffered at the time by some social Darwinists, such as Francis Galton. He argued that it was an evolutionary emphasis on cooperation instead of competition in the Darwinian sense that made for the success of species, including the human. Kropotkin explored the widespread use of cooperation as a survival mechanism in human societies, through their many stages, and among animals. He used many real-life examples in an attempt to show that the main factor in facilitating evolution is cooperation between individuals in free associated societies and groups, without central control, authority, or compulsion. He did so in order to counteract the concept of fierce competition as the core of evolution, which concept provided a rationalization for the dominant political, economic, and social theories of the time and for the prevalent interpretations of Darwinism. In the last chapter, he wrote, in the animal world we have seen that the vast majority of species live in societies, and that they find in association the best arms for the struggle for life, understood, of course, in its wide Darwinian sense, not as a struggle for the sheer means of existence, but as a struggle against all natural conditions unfavorable to the species. The animal species in which individual struggle has been reduced to its narrowest limits and the practice of mutual aid has attained the greatest development are invariably the most numerous, the most prosperous, and the most open to further progress. The mutual protection which is obtained in this case, the possibility of attaining old age and of accumulating experience, the higher intellectual development, and the further growth of sociable habits, secure the maintenance of the species, its extension, and its further progressive evolution. The unsociable species, on the contrary, are doomed to decay. Kropotkin did not deny the presence of competitive urges in humans, but did not see them as the driving force of history, as did capitalists and social Darwinists. He believed that seeking out conflict proved to be socially beneficial only in attempts to destroy unjust, authoritarian institutions such as the state or the church, which he saw as stifling human creativity and freedom and impeding human instinctual drive towards sociality and cooperation. Kropotkin's observations of cooperative tendencies in indigenous peoples pre -feudal, feudal, and those remaining in modern societies led him to conclude that not all human societies were based on competition, such as those of industrialized Europe, and that many societies exhibited cooperation among individuals and groups as the norm. He also concluded that most pre-industrial and pre-authoritarian societies where he claimed that leadership, central government and class did not exist actively defend against the accumulation of private property by, for example, equally distributing within the community a person's possessions when he died, or by not allowing a gift to be sold, bartered or used to create wealth see gift economy. Topic. Mutual aid In his 1892 book The Conquest of Bread, Kropotkin proposed a system of economics based on mutual exchanges made in a system of voluntary cooperation. He believed that should a society be socially, culturally, and industrially developed enough to produce all the goods and services required by it, then no obstacle, such as preferential distribution, pricing or monetary exchange will prevent everyone to take what they need from the social product. He supported the eventual abolition of money or tokens of exchange for goods and services. Kropotkin believed that Bakunin's collectivist economic model was simply a wage system by a different name, and that such a system would breed the same type of centralization and inequality as a capitalist wage system. He stated that it is impossible to determine the value of an individual's contributions to the products of social labor, and thought that anyone who was placed in a position of trying to make such determinations would wield authority over those whose wages they determined. 
He further developed these ideas in fields, factories and workshops, according to Kirkpatrick Sale. With mutual aid especially, and later with fields, factories, and workshops, Kropotkin was able to move away from the absurdist limitations of individual anarchism and no-laws anarchism that had flourished during this period and provide instead a vision of communal anarchism, following the models of independent cooperative communities he discovered while developing his theory of mutual aid. It was an anarchism that opposed centralized government and state-level laws as traditional anarchism did, but understood that at a certain small scale, communities and communes and co-ops could flourish and provide humans with a rich material life and wide areas of liberty without centralized control. Self-sufficiency Kropotkin's focus on local production led to his view that a country should strive for self-sufficiency, manufacture its own goods and grow its own food, lessening dependence on imports. To these ends he advocated irrigation and greenhouses to boost local food production ability. Works Books In Russian and French Prisons, London, Ward and Downey, 1887. Anarchist Archives e-text The Conquest of Bread, Paris, 1892 Project Gutenberg e-text, Project LibriVox audiobook The Great French Revolution, 1789–1793 French original, Paris, 1893, English translation, London, 1909, e-text in French, Anarchist Library e-text in English the Terror in Russia, 1909, Revoltlib e-text Words of a Rebel, 1885, Revoltlib e-text Fields, Factories and Workshops London and New York, 1898. Memoirs of a Revolutionist, London, Smith, Elder, 1899. Anarchist Library e-text, Anarchy Archives e-text Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution London, 1902 Project Gutenberg e-text, Project LibriVox audiobook Russian Literature, Ideals and Realities New York, A. A. Knopf, 1905. Anarchy Archives e-text The State, Its Historic Role, published 1946, Revoltlib e-text Ethics, Origin and Development unfinished. Included as first part of Origin y Evolución de la Moral Spanish e-text Modern Science and Anarchism, 1930, Revoltlib e-text Topic Pamphlets Topic Articles Topic See also Anarcho-Communism Anarchist Schools of Thought Katorga List of Russian Anarchists Topic References Topic Further reading Topic Books on Kropotkin Mac Laughlin, Jim, 2016. Kropotkin and the Anarchist Intellectual Tradition. Pluto Press, UK. ISBN 9780745335175. Topic Barnard, March 2004. Mutual Aid and the Foraging Mode of Thought: Rereading Kropotkin on the Khoisan. Social Evolution and History, 3, 1, 3 to 21. Jall, James, 1980. The Anarchists. Cambridge, Massachusetts: Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-03641-7. LCCN 80-010503. Woodcock, George and Avakumovic, Ivan The Anarchist Prince, A Biographical Study of Peter Kropotkin. Miller, Martin A. Kropotkin. University of Chicago Press. Morris, Brian Kropotkin, The Politics of Community. Humanity Press. The World That Never Was, A True Story of Dreamers, Schemers, Anarchists and Secret Police by Alex Butterworth Pantheon Books, 2010 Engelbert, Arthur 2012. Help. Gegenseitig Behindern oder Helfen. Eine politische Schizie zur Warnmung Hüt. Würzburg, Königshausen and Newman. ISBN 978-3-8260-5017-6. Cam, Caroline Kropotkin and the Rise of Revolutionary Anarchism 1872–1886. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-36445-0. Walter, Nicholas Kropotkin, Peter. Oxford Dictionary of National Biography Oxford University Press.
doi 10.1093 ref odnb 42326 subscription or uk public library membership required topic journal articles gould sj june 1997 kropotkin was no crackpot natural history 106 to 12 minus 21 Basic Kropotkin, Kropotkin and the History of Anarchism by Brian Morris, Anarchist Communist Editions Pamphlet No. 17 The Anarchist Federation, October 2008. Efremenko D., Evseva Y. Studies of Social Solidarity in Russia, Tradition and Modern Trends. American Sociologist, v. 43, 2012, No. 4, pp. 349-365, N.Y., Springer Science Plus Business Media. Prince P. A. Kropotkin, Obituary, Nature, 1921. Volume 106. p. 735-736. External links <inaudible> <inaudible> <inaudible>